the reason that people are confined to wheelchairs by spinal cord injury is because the pathways through the spinal cord that control movement coming from the brain down and control sensation coming from the body up to the brain are cut. And with this theory, which I had for many years, not the only theory, uh, I wanted to work out how to reconnect those damaged connections. <clears throat> it's a matter of connection. The, the connection, the divine connection between, it is divine for us, between nerve cells is called a synapse. It looks like this. There is one nerve cell connects another. And my work on my idea that it might be possible to repair this injury began with an observation. Uh, uh, by the way, I'm just a research scientist. I'm not a surgeon. Began with the uh, observation that after injury, where a connection is lost, the adjacent nerve fibers expand their territory to make new connections. That one observation was the beginning of the journey that I'm going to take you along. So there's a nerve fiber that's being cut, and there's something that has replaced a connection. And I call that plasticity. Plasticity meant that the brain and the spinal cord have the ability to form new connections after injury in the adult. It was a frontier that took a long time for people to accept. Well. That's all very well, that happens, so why are people uh, confined to wheelchairs and why could we not repair them? So here's our view of the spinal cord. Uh, we think of it as conveying impulses from the brain down to the body to control movement and conveying impulses from the body to control sensation, and that's what we're all doing now. If it's damaged, this represents damage between the arms and the legs at the, at the chest level. Then the patient has control of his arms and no control and no sensation from his feet, from his legs, and this is the familiar picture. He's using his arms, he's using the upper part of his body, he has lost control of the lower part. If the injury is higher up, then the brain is entirely, the person the, is entirely cut off from his own body. That's the Christopher Reeve situation. And in Virginia, when I was really in trouble, he came here to Kessler one afternoon and just, thank God I wear a seatbelt in his chair because I would have fallen out laughing. <laughs> it's funny, in the middle of a tragedy like this, in the middle of recuperation, you can still experience genuine joy and laughter and love and anybody who says life's not worth living is totally wrong, totally wrong. That's actually just a talking head. His body is completely disconnected from him. He has no feeling. Uh, when I first described, as I will do, our first patient, people said uh, it gave them hope and others said that um, Hope is not a good thing, and they were happy to be confined to their wheelchairs. Uh, I think you should take him as an example. You should never give up hope. Now, if that is the idea of what the injury is caused by, then this, the, the repair that you would look for is, is absolutely obvious. You would look to put something in there that allows the nerve fibers to grow back and reestablish their connections. It's a transplant concept. So there's the nerve fiber, there's the pathway. We're going to be talking about the pathway. The nerve fiber travels along the pathway. If the pathway is damaged, then the nerve fiber can't cross. The repair for that is to repair the pathway. 
I call it the pathway hypothesis. Well, that's all very easy to say, but what could we possibly use to repair a pathway inside the spinal cord, inside a damaged patient, when we have very little concept of what's happening in there? We went to the olfactory system because this is the only part of the nervous system that we know where nerve fibers repair themselves automatically, where if they're cut, they grow back, unlike the spinal cord. So if there is something in the olfactory system, in the pathway of the olfactory system, that can allow regeneration there, can we transfer that from the olfactory system to the damaged spinal cord? So, uh, right, yes, there's the olfactory nerve fibers in the, in the human skull. There they are going up into the area of the brain called the olfactory bulb. So if we look at what there is there, that, that represents the olfactory bulb. It's uh, the, the, the blue are the, case, the cells encasing it. That's the olfactory bulb. There are the olfactory nerves growing up into it. So that process occurs continually throughout life. The nerve fibers are growing up. They open their way into the brain. Go back, have a look. They open their way in, I'll do it again. That is the key to, to opening the way through a spinal cord injury. And that allows the nerve fibers to enter. So what we're talking about is providing uh, a tunnel or a way through which nerve fibers can grow and the pathway they can grow along. Uh, there are two members of my team who joined me 28 years ago from the Cultural Revolution. One is Da Ching Li, and this is, you see here the first um, culture, tissue culture of human olfactory nerve, uh, olfactory ensheathing cells, the red ones. This is what an olfactory ensheathing cell looks like. This is the pathway cell. So you see the cell is hollow. It has these channels through it with, with membranes um, enclosed in a, in a tube. That's what an olfactory ensheathing cell looks like in the olfactory system. And they produce a, a conduit by being aligned end to end. I thought this was a remarkable, in 1985, a remarkable discovery of, of shape um, in nature until I found that it had been manufactured 50 years earlier. <laughs> uh, uh, and that's exactly what they look like. This is my second Chinese colleague, Ying Li, who is going to, in the rat, transplant these cells. Uh, she devised an operation to transplant them into spinal cord in the rat. And here are some examples of uh, what we see. This is a normal rat taking food. Their favorite food is Chinese egg noodles. Uh, and I want you to look at the front left paw, that's the one nearest to you. This is normal. They use both paws. Unlike uh, Only humans are, have selective handedness. All other animals are equal. Probably because we have speech area on one side of our brain. Now, this is the injury, the, the specimen injury that we make. These animals are perfectly healthy. They are not disabled, but if you look at the front left paw, not paralyzed, but it can't get it through. It just can't place it in space. Okay. And this is after transplantation. And you see now, it's actually pulling the, the noodle out of my hand. So that's the rat model of repairing an injury 
with tra transplanted cells from the olfactory and sh sheathing cell system. This is what it looks like. Here's the uh, nerve fiber with its achievement. There's the damage. After injury, a scar forms. Regeneration is blocked by the scar. The answer at the moment is a wheelchair. We repair it by transplanting, and we transplant a mixture of the patient's own olfactory and sheathing cells and olfactory nerve fibroblasts with them. Those are transplanted into the injury. They reorganize the injury, reform the pathway, and the nerve fiber grows along it. So we have, in this experimental model, we've made an injury, we've repaired the injury by transplanting the cells, the function comes back, the nerve fibers reconnect. So to go from rat to man, uh, this is our team from Wrocław in Poland. Um, the neurosurgery is done in Poland by the lead neurosurgeon, Pavel Tabakov, who was shadowing us for many years before we, we came to work together. This is our first patient. We have only one patient. And this is just to show you before operation. <laughs> He had intensive physiotherapy for six months. And you see he's completely unable to walk. There's no possibility of moving. Whether you push him or pull him, he can't do it. This is the transplant. We discussed how so the, the the operation is carried out with three consultant neurosurgeons. It's a thirteen hour operation uh, with an assistant preparing the cells for transplantation and this is after operation. <laughs> This is a man who was completely unable to get out of his wheelchair. He can now go now. He can now walk. In this, this is one year after operation. With this little pa parallel bar, I'll take you along a little bit. Now, the recovery takes time, and it takes an enormous effort on the part of the patient. We have given him much less than 1% of his connections back. They're incorrectly wired. He has to work out how to rewire them. Now, if you're surprised it takes so long, he's now two and a, now nearly three years after operation, he's still improving. This is my daughter at age 18 months. And you see, she's still at this stage, this is normal development requiring Assistance to stand up, assistance to walk at 18 months. She did all right. That's what she looks like now. Much <laughs> managed. So this is Derek um, with a walking frame. So he's now liberated from his wheelchair. He can get around on his own. He could get around his home with a single bar along the walls. His married life has come back. He drives a car. He brings his mother into the rehab center where she makes wonderful peasant meals for all of us. And he goes out, I don't approve of this, but he goes out hunting with his friends in the forest. When the Long before we had any success or chance of dealing with, with spinal injury, I said uh, that it, I thought it would be a better thing and a more difficult thing to get a man out of a wheelchair than to put a man on the moon. The Americans flew around my head like, like as I stirred up a, a hornet's nest. 
and they told me that despite the fact that it was no use putting a man on the moon, they'd made an enormous amount of money out of all the materials. They'd invented Teflon, which can coat the bottom of frying pans and President's coattails, and why not go away and shut up? Um, I still think it would be uh, a, a better and a more difficult thing to get a man out of a wheelchair than, than to put a man on the moon. But, and you may have entirely opposite opinion if you want, but the fact is neither I nor you have any right to an opinion. If you want to know whether it's better to put a man on the moon or to get a man out of a wheelchair, ask someone in a wheelchair. They're entitled to give you the answer. We're not. Now, this, to show you what we, the very little we achieved in this patient, um, this is, this is a, a scan of his spinal cord here. The injury is there. I'm going to show you it. It's there. We'll look at a little bit higher power. Can you see that little bridge of tissue that we've reconstructed? That's allowing the nerve fibers to grow down to control movement and to grow up to bring in sensation. Those very few connections there, and they're all jumbled up, just like this traffic jam in Wrocław when they had floods. But the cars are trickling their way through, and in the end, the city does come back to working again. But it takes a long time and a lot of patience. If we are right, this is only one patient, I can be wrong. I don't think I'm wrong, I can be wrong. It can be, he can have got better for a reason we can't yet imagine. But if we're right, we've opened the door, not only to spinal cord, but to stroke and deafness and blindness. We're in fact ourselves working on the optic nerve in glaucoma. Uh, we're halfway along a journey that began with plasticity in 1969, olfactory and sheathing cells in 85, the rat paw reaching in 97, Derek in 2014, and where we would like to be next. What I think we have done is given hope, and it should not be dismissed because hope is hope. If you want to know, to look in the crystal ball of where we, we're at the bottom of a mountain, what we have to do is improve, looking in the crystal ball, to improve the number of the type of cells, to get better bridging material, and I'm anticipating a closed surgical approach. There's a long way to go. In 1903, this man on horseback saw this peculiar thing in the sky. She had two brothers in it. This is the Wright brothers. They flew for 120 feet uh, over 12 seconds. But it was the proof that flight could occur. There's going to be a very, very long journey from there to, a, to a, an airliner. But the principle is that you can fly. Okay, well, that's all I've got to say. <laughs>